What's up YouTube? I'm Brett from Rants R Us. As always guys, if y'all enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. We're on the road to 1000 we hope y'all guys will join us this day. Today I'm going to be talking about Season 2, Episode 3 of The Mandalorian. Um, I will say this, uh, this season has not disappointed me so far. In fact, it's actually uh, excelled my expectations for it. I thought... Uh, you know, I've said in prior videos, I thought season one was uh, hit or miss. This season's spot on completely. Um, we've got, you know, there's so many callbacks to previous shows, previous canon of, uh, and lore of, of Star Wars that I've enjoyed. Like me as a Star Wars fan, I've totally enjoyed this show. If it wasn't marred with controversy that's the only thing that pisses me off about all of this show this season is like every episode something about baby yoda committing genocide pedro pascal pissing off trump fans uh you know gina carano whatever people's problem with gina carano is i have no idea like she literally doesn't even say anything and people are like i hate her yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just that she hadn't even showed up on this show yet. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, where is she? She was, a, I won't say she's a big part of season one, but you know, there was only a few episodes of season one. So you know, yeah, she played a pretty decisive role in the, at least in the ending of of season one. So I'm kind of shocked that they haven't like presented her yet. Another one I'm shocked that they haven't shown, and I'm kind of pissed off about it is uh, Ahsoka Tano. Like, we're episode three now, no Ahsoka Tano. I know she'll be in the next episode, but, it, but you know, we'll be halfway through this season. And so I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't kind of, you know, that was the whole thing uh, about this season was Ahsoka Tano. You know, I kind of feel like um, Baby Yoda's ship is passed. I feel like, you know, people now realize that, you know, uh, that Baby Yoda can't carry this show alone. Like, it's going to take more. It's going to take more of the Mando, of Mando you know, uh, showing what he can do. It's going to, you know, some of these other characters are going to have to step up. That's why I th thought Ahsoka Tano was going to be, you know, you know, the big intrigue for season two. But, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm disappointed that she hasn't showed up. Hopefully, um, you know, She'll get a lot of face time the rest of the season. Because I just feel like Pedro Pascal's Mandalorian, or Mando, is, um, he's just like a side character at this point. Like, like, and I just feel like he doesn't just take this show, even though his name is literally on, you know, the cover of it. I feel like he doesn't take this show and make it his own. That's the way I feel towards it. But anyways... I'll get into the episode. Um, okay, at the end of episode two, we saw uh, the ice spiders break his windshield and basically break his ship all to pieces. Okay, how is that thing still flying? Like, even though he fixes it, I'm like, uh, when, when we see it flying through space and it's going to Mon Calamari, I kind of feel, uh, I kind of felt like, how is just even the tiniest little crack, all it takes is like a tiny little crack. Um, to just send them just flying off into space. So I'm like, unless they have like a repair shop on every single planet, or unless he's just got like a new windshield in, you know, his storage unit or something, like I don't see how he repaired that ship to even get it to fly in outer space, much less, well, I guess, to fly at all. But apparently he didn't fix the breaking bad of it because they end up crashing on Mon Calamari, which is actually a pretty funny part. Uh, you know, he's, they're flying in. You don't know if they're going to make it. They get on the landing pad, and you think everything's okay, and then his ship just falls off into the ocean, and then the crane has to pick him up, which kind of makes me wonder, why is that crane there? Because is that crane, like, there must be a lot of drunk patrons that just fall on Mon Calamari all the dang time, uh, where their ships fall off in the ocean for them to need that crane right there by that landing pad. But I thought that was kind of a cool thing. I thought... Uh, I enjoyed the I enjoyed that little moment of uh, comedy. I also enjoyed the little part where Baby Yoda's eating that soup and that little squid jumps on his face. 
which we all know that Baby Yoda is like an apex predator. And uh, so it's kind of odd that he would let something like that get the best of him because we've seen him eat much bigger things than that little squid. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I will say this. I'm a little confused, and I've been confused on this show, about um, exactly what the arm. I guess it was the armor. I think that is the leader of uh, the Mandalorian. I, uh, I don't... I thought that they were going to be taking they, what she meant was take baby Yoda to the people that uh, to his species but apparently she meant the Jedi and so that's something that's kind of been a little bit vague I know I'm probably one of the only ones that probably didn't really catch on completely and totally until uh, I think like episode one I started kind of realizing okay we're not going to see a bunch of you know a planet full of baby Yodas we're not going to learn any anything about Yoda's species we're just going to be going to the Jedi which I guess I should have dawned on me since they're looking for for Ahsoka Tano but it just it I don't really understand there's so much about Mando that doesn't really understand anything about the Jedi for them to just automatically assume that that's his people like 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 uh, uh, for that I know of there was only two of Yoda's species that ever was Jedi. So I don't understand why baby Yoda just automatically is a Jedi. Like I don't understand when that's the first people that they want to take them to. Especially since, you know, uh, the Jedi were destroyed and, you know, they're in rebuild mode. Like I don't really understand why that would be the proper place to take baby Yoda. But I digress. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we got to see some really cool things. We got to see Bo-Katan. Uh, Bo um, when they were on that ship, and, you know, it looked like a pretty bad, you know, uh, Baby Yoda had been ate by that uh, sea monster, and then you have old, uh, 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 those, uh, I don't know what those people are called, uh, those squid-like creatures poking him uh poking him down that water it looks like he's going to drown i always i wondered when the very first thing that i saw uh was uh was bo katan and her i guess they call them night owls go and and uh you know fly on the ship and they're like well we've been watching y'all and i'm like they were just sailing across the ocean um unless they had a ship of their own were they flying in those jetpacks just hanging out in the clouds like i didn't think that's how those jetpacks exactly worked um, must have a lot of gas to them or something but I didn't understand that part exactly how they they just showed up on the ship just like that if they were out in the middle of the ocean um, but it was kind of cool you know we actually got to learn a little bit about Mando he's part of the Death Watch like like that is something that you know anybody from Star Wars Rebels or Star Wars um, uh, the Clone Wars will recognize uh, that cult of Mandalorians that believe in sticking with the old ways. And so, you know, to a certain extent, you know, from what we've always known of the Death Watch, um, you know, you could say Mando's pretty on the wrong side of things. Um, but, you know, when he takes off, I feel like he assumes a lot and knows very little bit about his own people. Because he doesn't know anything about uh, his, uh, uh, Mandalorian's home planet, Mandalore. He doesn't know anything about what real Mandalorians actually do. He just knows that the Death Watch refuses to take their helmets off. And he just assumes that that's just, I guess, the way on things. But I feel like, you know, for somebody that is so bent on an ideology he knows very little bit about anything seems like he's learning as he's going whether it be about the Jedi or whether it's about the Mandalorians themselves so I kinda I don't know that part just kinda irks me a little bit maybe it's their maybe it's uh, Disney's way of trying to get us uh, fans that maybe didn't watch the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels to get more familiar with you know Death Watch and you know with Mandalorians in general but I don't know that just that little bit just kind of always irks me um, that he knows so little bit and okay and another thing that I don't get is how did Bo-Katan lose her uh, 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 lose her dark saber uh, like I didn't 
Okay, you know, we saw Moff Gideon at the end of season one. Uh, you know, he's holding it. And I know that there was like some kind of great purge where the, uh, the Empire goes in there and takes over a lot of Mandalore. But she was the leader of the Mandalorians uh, last, you know, at the end of the Clone Wars. So how did she survive? I would like to know a little bit more on that, of how she survived and how he ended up taking taking her dark saber did he defeat her in battle because that would seem like be the only thing that would make me think uh, uh, of how he got that dark saber because she wouldn't have left that behind because that dark saber means too much to mandalorians for them to just leave it behind so he must have de moff gideon must have actually defeated her in battle and if that's the case i want to see more about moff gideon like i want to see what this guy's actually capable of doing but yeah, so so we learned that. Um, let's see what else happened on that. Um, I think that's. I think probably about the only other thing that really stood out to me on on this uh, episode was just what is the point of the stormtroopers? Like they are so worthless, so worthless. You could have millions upon millions of these guys. And they can't even hit in a hallway uh, uh, shooting straight. Like, I thought when those, uh, when the Mandalorians, when they attack the ship, when they're still in those weapons, and then you have all of these stormtroopers uh, in this hallway, just this narrow hallway, and they can't even shoot straight to hit the people directly in front of them. It would be hard not to be able to hit them. And you've got 20 stormtroopers that are just shooting randomly in the air. And uh, those Mandalorians are picking them off. I think that just kind of makes it... I know they joked about it even in the episode. But it kind of... Uh, I don't know. I just wish that they would maybe make stormtroopers a little bit more serious. Because, you know, the stormtroopers that was... Uh, you know, we learned a lot about them in the Clone Wars about you know how you know they're they were a proud people they were all this and i get it these aren't the clones anymore these aren't the clones um that that was in the clone wars but i just i'm like you know why did the clone wars spend so much time on making those guys underneath that mask so important only to kind of mock them in other things because of the bad shooting like i don't understand that and I guess lastly, the one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed on is is I think they're setting up a Bo-Katan uh, series after this. I guess this is probably going to be the spinoff series. I was actually kind of hoping that would be Ahsoka Tana. I kind of feel like um, I'm not really invested in Bo-Katan. Like, I get... Um, I thought the woman that played her in the live action version, I think she was actually the voice in uh, the Clone Wars of, of Bo-Katan too. And, I mean, she, she fits the part, no doubt. She looks the part. Um, she's a really good actor. I enjoyed her in the live action version. But I don't know if I'm like excited maybe to see her in the series. Uh, so I'm hoping they don't go that way. But it sure does look like they're going to go that way. It looks like there was too much information that they were kind of uh, putting out there for them not to explore it later on in epi or either in future episodes of the Mandalorian which I don't see them really doing because that really doesn't fit with the story of uh, you know getting baby Yoda back to the Jedi so I'm assuming that that's probably not where they're going to go with this but anyways you know I'd rather a Soka Tano series but hey get what we can get but anyways guys that's my review of episode 3. Uh, Y'all take care.